This is the Jenkins infrastructure meeting for the 8th of September. Let me share my screen and we can look at the agenda. So topics, incrementals on Kubernetes, Docker terms of service, Jira upgrade, Oracle Cloud, and release status reports. Tim, anything else you want to add? Is there anything on Mara's? Oh, oh, good, good question. I don't actually have anything other than they seem to be running well and successfully, but let's double check that mirror status. Oh, and, and, the, and the old Mara solution as well. Mara brain. Yeah, so mirror bits which is the new solution in your brain. Good, yeah, so let's put that on the list. Excellent. Okay, actually I think for benefit, it may be best, let's put it right up here. Great. Yeah, maybe just put on the Kubernetes upgrade. Okay. Upgrade and this is upgrade of the major of the version of Kubernetes itself. Yeah. Okay. Any any other topics? I don't think so. All right. So you want to take the floor first with incrementals now running on Kubernetes. Thanks very much for making that happen. Tell us more about it. Cool. So most of the work happened while I was off. Um, work between Gavin and Alex mostly, I think. Um, Gavin um, converted the function to a web app, um, created a Helm chart for it and created a DNS PR and then Marky and Alex, they got that the DNS set up. Um, So when I got back, um, the main, there were, there were two issues left, um, which I think people weren't sure on or didn't know how to do. Um, so one of, one of the issues, well, there were two issues left plus other things I had along the way. Um, so number one was the secrets needed to be, to creating a new secret file requires someone with Azure P Vault access. Um, so that it gets encrypted with the um, the signing key, uh, with the encryption key um, in, in Key Vault, um, so that it can be decrypted um, in the pipeline. Um, so I think, I don't know if anyone else knew how to do that. Um, I think you would have had access, uh, and so would the ballots, um, but I doubt anyone else had done it. Well, I hadn't done it before either, at least. Um, for a new file, I think. So I think Olivia is the only one who's created a new file before. Yeah, and I don't think I'm in that. If I remember looking at that vault, so that's an action item for me. We need to document and test drive it by having me submit something. Yeah, I mean, I think I think you have access. Okay, great. Let me just do it. Mark access. Nope. Yeah, so, so you have access to do all of that. Um, okay, great. Yeah, um, the other thing was that Marky couldn't find the pod. I was a surprised there. Um, so for some, well, for some reason, the job DSL config isn't getting reloaded with Jenkins Infra when, when the job runs. Um, and, Sometimes seems to need to be rebooted, and then on startup it loads it. So I mean that, that shouldn't be happening, but for some reason it for some reason it, it is happening. Um, uh, and there was like a question of it was on a different Kubernetes cluster. We, we're only running one Kubernetes cluster. Um, it's the uh, and all the configuration is in Git, so it should be able to be found by anyone. 
um, it's in the Jenkins Infra namespace. Um, well, then, the other that was, was, sorry, what was that? I need to capture. I was I was left in the awkward position there. Wow, I don't have access. I I have permission to access the Kubernetes cluster. I have accessed it, but I've lost my documentation to describe how to do it. So I, I've got to remind myself. This is how it's done. Do this. Go ahead. Sorry. All right. Um, after that, um, uh, so while I was away, someone merged the um, update CLI PR for Cert Manager, and Cert Manager had a breaking change in it, um, and it was crashing after update. Okay, now tell me, forgive my ignorance on that one, what does Cert Manager provide? That's the SSL certificates for sites? Yeah, so two things. It issues new certs and two, it renews certs. Um, so if there'd been any renewals during that time, they wouldn't have happened. Um, but I think we were fine. It, it was only out for a week, maybe less than a week, um, and it would have got renewed during that. But it, it is a risk. Um, yeah, so um, that so one I'm monitoring. I monitor SSL cert. SSL cert health um, pretty regularly. So, but I've actually got a problem on that that I should put on the list here that I need some help with. So, wiki.jenkins.io SSL cert erratic. So, add it. Okay, go ahead. Yep. Um, so, yeah, that was crashing. Um, eventually, well, there was two issues. Yeah, there was two issues with that, um, but, well, it took a bit of fiddling and running it from live sharing and whatnot, but um, I had to update the API version um, that we use for our certificate objects. Um, and the other issue was, um, it was complaining about not being able to find the DNS solver. I thought they changed the syntax. Turns out that they'd made it, they'd made it case sensitive and encrypted in the secrets. Um, so the, the the um, the DNS configuration is encrypted in chart secrets and encrypted it was all lowercase and didn't match the correct case so that one was a pain and took, took a while to find um, so I fixed that um, and then today um, we found that the pipeline wasn't green because the LDAP certificate um, was, it was failing to up, upgrade the Helm release. Um, and so I went there, the LDAP set was missing because of all the deleting and recreating. Um, so the cert was there, just the cert object that renews it was missing. Um, and so I tried to update it. It was impossible to update because the old one didn't exist anymore. Um, possibly there's a way, to, possibly they were bridging it between versions. Um, so I'm guessing for a few versions, they had both versions available. Hopefully, I don't know, it's hard to tell. I, I could dig it through history, but um, so I thought I was gonna have to fully delete LDAP, but um, I didn't really wanna do that. Um, it would have taken LDAP down, I would have had to make sure backups are working and taking a local, taking a snapshot and everything. And didn't really wanna do that. Um, so I ended up finding a way to, um, I, edited, I, ed I edited this Helm release and up, and told and told the current version that it was actually using the newer API version, and then I was able to update it fine. There was there was documentation on the Helm website on how to do that. Um, it's, it's kind of like hopping into the database, decoding it, um, unzipping. So you, you basically have to you have to decode it, you have to unzip it, you have to modify it, and then re-encode and. Um, Reason. <laughs> so lots of dark magic was done there in in that world. Yes, but I didn't have to take all that down. Okay. Thank you very much. I would never have been able to do that that level of 
of delving in deep dive. Thank you. Thank you. Um, so those are all the issues that I had. Um, and yeah, we just, we, we tested, we created a PR to pipeline library, pushed it as an origin branch and, um, tested it, um, without authentication and then with authentication, um, and it all worked fine. And I haven't seen any complaints. Um, Gavin's been hacking on it a bit. And there's a few improvements and cleanups and whatnot. Yeah, I closed the ticket that Jesse had and I closed another ticket I found. I also closed a whole bunch of other info tickets that were just sitting there open, but they were done ages ago. I closed like 30, 30 plus tickets, I think. <laughs> Thank you. Thanks very much. Anything else on the experiences on incrementals on Kubernetes? No, I don't so. Okay, so next topic then, Kubernetes upgrade. Yeah, so I'm wondering about doing a Kubernetes upgrade. It's running on a outdated minor version of 1.15. Um, 1.15 in general is, is going out of support at the end of the month. Um, not that we have Microsoft support, but it, it's no longer supported by Microsoft at all um, at the end of the month. Um, I was thinking about doing an upgrade of it. It should be fine um, in general. So an upgrade would be to like 1.18, 1.19? What's, uh, what's your? Probably 1.17. Okay. I'm not sure. It might have to be a staged upgrade across multiple, I'm not sure. And a staged upgrade would mean it would iterate across multiple multiple yeah, components? Might, or? might have to go to like 115 latest before going, I'm not sure. Ah, I see, okay. Um, to 1.15 latest. Now, it, does it require a transition through 1.16 as well, or it's enough 1.15 latest potentially, and then all the way to 1.17? Um, okay. no, I guess. Hmm. It says use the upgrade menu, but I can't see the upgrade menu. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Here we go. Um, so we can go to 1.16.latest and then um, and then I think we can go to and then we have to go to 1.16 and then 1.17, I think. Ah, okay. So it, you already know it is a it it would be a two-stage upgrade. We would go 1.15 currently outdated to 1.16 latest and then 1.16 latest to 1.17. Yeah. Okay. And in terms of do is is the idea there? We propose a plan for when because that I assume would take an outage. So no, it's, need outage. To... it's all it's all rolling upgrade and new nodes, oh, okay. placeholder nodes. Ah, okay, all right. Nice. Okay. And is there any threat? Any significant threat there from? incompatibilities between 1.15 and 1.17 surprises that we might encounter? Um, I think there shouldn't be anything in 1.17. 1.16, um, I think there's one which I don't think will hit. Uh, if we do, it's, it's minor fix. Um, Okay. Great. And is this one that you want to speculate a timeline when you'd like to do it? So by end of month, so we've got roughly three weeks. Yeah, I was planning to probably just do it one morning this week, like early morning my time. 
just wanted to raise awareness. Okay. Is it okay if I just say London time? Uh, you may not be in London. London is close enough. It's the time zone. Okay. London. Great. Europe, London. Yeah, it's, I'm an hour away from Denver, but for me, I'm in Denver time. Okay, great. Anything else on Kubernetes upgrade? No. Okay, a mirror status report. So this is one where I think I need I need synchronization to understand more details about where we are. So we've got we've got get.jenkins.io, which is definitely running the new solution. Yep. HTTPS uh, and it's mirroring to six sites at least. Mm -hmm. Uh, and those sites include sites in, in Asia, Europe, and the US. Yeah. Now the, the old solution is still running. It's still running on updates.jenkins-ci.org. Or is that, has that been? Mirrors.jenkins.ci.org. Mirrors, oh, thank you, mirrors, thank you. And it is HTTP only. Yeah, the main, the main problem with mirror being still being running is people keep going to the old mirror, the old mirror status page, and getting confused because there's new mirrors on mirror bits. Oh right, right, and I have the action item to fix at least one place that causes that confusion. Sorry, I haven't done that yet. Um, Mark to update the Jenkins.io mirrors mirrors page. It's sort of a freestanding page that looks like an old, really old blog post, but it yeah. has a link to the status page that's misleading. Yeah. Um, the only thing that I'm aware of that is um, still using Mirrorbrain is release candidates for um, Jenkins LTS versions. Yeah, I thought that Jenkins LTS candidates were, and I thought that the Windows releases were not yet all there. Let me do a quick check just to get Jenkins.io. If I remember correctly, when I looked at Windows, this is the wrong one. I need one that will show me the list of files. No. Just try go to um, Update Center and get it. Get dodging aside is not the best for browsing, but if you go to Updates. Ah, okay. So updates like that. Yeah. And um, index of all releases of Jenkins Core, I guess. Uh, okay. So if we look at or no, I was looking for, oh, <laughs> I I, guess I. <laughs> yeah, I think I'm looking for Windows stable, aren't I? No, I'll have to look for it separately, but I, I thought Windows releases were still on the, on the old infrastructure, because if I go to download here, this link takes me actually through a page that uses here, I'll do it and cancel. And this page mm -hmm. is mirrors.jenkins-ci. I'm pretty sure it is available on get.jenkins.ci, ah. but I think we may need to update the links. Okay, great. All right, so that's, that's, I know there's an infra ticket for that one to remind me that I need to go do that. Uh, and so, needs link update and confirmation that uh, of availability on get. All right. Great. Yeah. So I would, I would like to turn the brain off just so we don't run through systems. But so I think we need to yeah sort the windows and the Jenkins LTS uh, release candidates. Well, in the LTS release candidates, I think that's a negotiate with uh, Oliver Gonja, right? Just a yeah. matter of 
hey, persuade him. Either we need to create a release.ci build process for LTS RCs, or we need to somehow give him permission to upload to, to the new structure. Yeah, um, I assume the proper way is that he uses the release infrastructure to build RCs. Um, I would assume. Yeah. I mean, he can already upload to the new infrastructure. He'll already have access. If, he, okay. if he's got access to upload to package, he's got access to upload here. Um, the, the other uh, benefit, if we build with the build infrastructure, is we get signed war files. Right now, yeah. if I remember correctly, he can't sign the war files because he doesn't have access to the signing key. Yeah. Yeah, they'll be properly signed. They'll be they'll use all the same distribution. And... Right. Okay. Anything else on the mirror status report? No. All right. So I've got one. This wiki.jenkins.io SSL certificate. I have tests that regularly check for the SSL certificate expiration date. And oddly enough, my checking tool is using a W get call from CheckMK. And it periodically reports that the certificate will expire in seven, day, expire in seven days. And if I refresh the, the thing, it says, no, it's got a long time. Uh, for instance, if I open it now on my web browser, it's going to tell me that the certificate is valid until Oh, no, now it says only six days left. Okay, so I see the problem now in my web browser. Okay. I get two months. You do. Okay, so mine does not. So mine got the outdated one. So there's some, some issue then because mine says the certificate expires in six days. I get 16th of November. That, okay, so something's wrong What's on that nine? thing. You're getting... Yeah. Mine is expiring the 14th of September, so six days from now. And now if I refresh again, now it's the 16th of November, so it just switched. So there's some there's some configuration problem on that computer. Restart Apache. It what? Just rest restart the web server. It's probably an old process or something. Ah, right, of course. Because, yeah, that's a good idea. Hadn't thought of that. Thank you. I can take care of that. Great. And if that's not it, I have to investigate further. I can't imagine it could be anything else. I don't really know how that system set up, but really. Great. So we had carried over change of Docker service, terms of service. I don't think there's anything to discuss there, is there, Tim? Uh, there was one suggestion from Tyler, which was running a just run just run a pull through registry in Murrow. So for our infrastructure, we could just run a just run a cache. Yeah, and we had used something like that before, where we ran. I think we ran an instance of an artifact cache. Yeah. Not not a Docker registry, but an artifact cache. In the infrastructure and chose to switch it off, so that that's a that's a, a topic for discussion there. You could probably do it for artifactory, I would say. Yeah, actually, that's I, I, I wouldn't point users at it, but for our use, I think we could have it as a mirror, and that probably right. solves the concern that Daniel had. That not so sure about if they would want all that traffic going to artifactory, but if it's just our infrastructure, it's not very really much. So that, that's an alternative. Good. All right. Then let's see. So, and I've got conversations going on with uh, JFrog about Artifactory. Um, there's been some concern expressed that our usage is quite heavy. And so Daniel Beck and I will have a conversation with them about their continuing sponsorship of artifact repository for the Jenkins project. We hope to keep them continuing. We very much, it's very central to the to the Jenkins development flow. Yeah, that one's quite critical. <laughs> yeah. It's a lot of bandwidth that we don't want to have to run. 
Exactly. And, and that was their concern is they see a lot of bandwidth use. And so now we'll have a discussion. Hey, is there a way that we can reduce the bandwidth use? What could we do to continue, have you continue hosting so that we don't have to host our own artifact repository? I assume it's the update center heading out. I, I don't know. And that's where we'll have the conversations with them to understand what is the source of the traffic. Mm. Yeah. All right, then JIRA upgrade plan. My apologies, no progress since last meeting. I've, I've asked Linux Foundation to schedule this, the session 2.249.1 releases soon, so I should have time this week to work on the JIRA upgrade plan. Uh, had a conversation with Oracle Cloud last week, and um, they are focused on enterprise, enterprise use cases for cloud, including CI and CD, and are interested in working with the Jenkins project. Okay. Uh, one of the things that they noted is that their bandwidth costs are significantly less than bandwidth costs from most other providers, which was interesting to us because, as I understand it, roughly a third of our Azure bill is bandwidth. So that might make it very, very helpful if we could reduce costs by having them help us reduce bandwidth costs. Yeah. So last month our bandwidth cost was one thousand US. The month before. Oh, that's all. The month of, the month before it was eighteen hundred. Ah, okay. I don't know why. I'm not sure whether it was security releases, maybe. I don't, I don't know. But for some reason, two months ago, the bandwidth cost was huge. And then last month we swapped a lot of traffic over onto more, which should have taken us more bandwidth, but it didn't. Well, and, and I was concerned about this month's and had looked at the uh, at their billing prediction. And we were under budget for the month of August. So we've got 10,000 that we budget. And as of the last day of August, their estimates said we were well under the $10,000 limit, even with the bandwidth changes you made for mirroring. Yeah. We, we went over the month before, though. Oh, we did. OK. <laughs> not, not by much, though. All right. Okay, last topic I had was release status reports, 252.256 released today, but doesn't have a change log yet. I'll create that. And 2.249.1 is LTS tomorrow. Thanks, Tim, to you for your fix for pipeline stage view. That was the one glaring thing that I had seen. Yeah, I think that was a combination of theming and tables rework. It was, using, it was using the table's header background color and the table color changed, but it wasn't using the table header text color. Oh, so, nice. Like, yeah, so it was core change. I could, there's another one about transparency, which I couldn't reproduce. I'm not sure if it's fixed in New Weekly. Um, yeah, so the, the transparency thing was definitely fixed in 2.249.1 with your change when I checked it. Uh, mine didn't change transparency. Uh, well, I guess what I, I should say it more clearly. The place I saw the transparency problem was in 2.235. Mm. And, I, and I think it was that problem was resolved in 2.249. It was no yeah. longer a transparency problem. It was yeah, the, I, I think that must have been fixed in a weekly. As, yeah, I couldn't reproduce uh, that one. Okay, great. All right. Any other topics? Um, just maybe what so what else what else is going on with oracle is it is it just more talks about what they could offer or what we could do together with them right so so one of the requ the two requests i offered to them were hey we would love to have compute capacity have you contribute compute uh so that we could use it with uh for ci.jenkins.io uh i suggested having them con contribute mirror capacity would help reduce further further bandwidth demands for uh, get.jenkins.io. And I've also asked them if they are interested in donating to Google Season of Docs to provide a cluster for our writer. Uh, they may say, no, I've got another plan if they do. Hmm. Yeah. So the other thing that Olivia was talking about, I think before I went away, was people. You know, if they've got anyone that can even contribute for a bit of time on a project, um, 
on mirrors or whatnot, then like company contribution, company contribution is the biggest benefit that we can get really. Yeah. And that's a good point. I did not discuss with that, that with him, but let me bring that up with him in the next meeting. That's a very good suggestion that, hey, if you've got someone that you could, and they, they have someone uh, who came to them from Suzy Linux and is very much deep into, into infrastructure, might be a great contributor if we could get five or 10 hours a week of that person. Yeah, that's a point. Excellent. Anything yeah. else? Uh, but not on that. Just, you know, when the K8's cluster, shouldn't, it, shouldn't, we can, it shouldn't be a problem to get a K8's cluster. Um, is there a, is there a reason not starting locally? Is it um, like laptop power or? Um, so one of the one of the needs is a Jenkins X user who doesn't or a Jenkins X season of Docs contributor who does not have enough laptop to do it. Mm -hmm. um, and the the Jenkins Google season of Docs contributor, she will do it with her laptop initially, probably for the first my assumption is the first month. So there, it's not a not the crisis for her that it is for the Jenkins X person, um, and so that's that's the the constraints there are we've got a little bit of time to work on it for the Jenkins portion of it, the Jenkins X people do not, and it turns out I've learned I've got to find a different solution for them anyway. Cool. I mean, I'd speak. You can um, just sign up for a free trial of one of the cloud providers in the meantime, anyway. Right. And, and that's, yeah. that's a, that's a good fallback for, for the, the case I confirmed Thursday or no yesterday with Zena that she hasn't done a free trial yet with any of the providers. So she could use that for a, for a month's worth of cloud resources already. All right. If this was, if this was like a month ago, I was at KubeCon and they were throwing trials out on everything. <laughs> Right, exactly. They were giving them away, right? It's a, the, the, here's I, I several hundred you, dollars. I could have got you like trials for every provider probably to like the end of the year or something. Right. <laughs> um, but yeah, <laughs> timing didn't quite work out on that. Um, yep. Yeah, apart from that, um, there's like, yeah, K3s and um, it's not very heavy. Um, well, I'm sure we've got room on the bill to chuck a cluster on anyway. Either either on AWS, I'm sure there's room, and on a on Kubernetes. I'm sorry, on the Kubernetes on Azure. We've got room on Kubernetes on, on Azure bill as well. I assume, they're not, I assume they're not doing very much. They're just running it with some small projects. Exactly. Yeah, that's that's my assumption as well. The the estimate and the experience with the last Google season of the Google Summer of Code I, for Jenkins X was it was about 150 a month spend for them, which is still not a, not a huge spend. Yeah, I, I'm sure we can get that down as well. I don't think that you need as much as what Kara quoted, but um, but if you want to go for that, it's fine. I, I'm just trying to find the simplest path that I can to get to get to a solution. So I'll, I'll keep looking for that just to have everybody aware. And I'm, I'm, I love to hear suggestions and happy to act on those suggestions to explore other ways to do it. Yeah. Cool. All right. Thanks, Tim. No worries. See you. The recording will be posted. Thanks, everybody.